is letter 422 and this is the 30th or is it no it's not <laughs> yes it is the 30th of the 3rd 2009 I have to keep my eyes on the day I'm either running ahead <laughs> running ahead and the prophets are always before their time yes newsletter 422 titled the well of the living one who sees me the well of the living one see I have that in commas there and, uh, I have that outstanding that Yahweh is a living one he's not a dead God he's not a obese statue he's not a uh, 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 a figure on a on a cross hanging around their neck he's none of that he's not in a tabernacle in a box in a building and he's not a piece of wafer he's a living one he's a living God he's almighty God and I chose 1 Corinthians 7 9 this relates to marriage if a man or woman cannot exercise self-control over their body let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn with passion this is not for everyone of course Paul the Apostle Paul the Apostle was a man that didn't marry he had control over the body can someone say amen I admire that man for that <laughs> I really do. I, that's the sort of man I admire. A, a man that needs not to marry because he doesn't burn with the passions of the flesh. I admire that. That's uh, a mighty man to me. So, what I'm talking about in this newsletter is uh, what the world sees marriage as what the Lord sees marriage as and we know that the Lord sees all things and, and even the title the well of the living one who sees me the Lord sees that we burn with passion or we don't the Lord sees very clearly these were the words uh, the well of the living one who sees me of Hagar she was the bond woman and uh, Sarah was the free typifying, typifying Hagar as the uh, Islamic woman and Sarah as the Christian woman and she said Be'elah hai rohai which is the well of the living one who sees me because if you read Genesis 16 verses 7 and 14 uh, Haggai came across some water and she knew that Yahweh knew she needed water and even though uh, Ishmael and Muslims are our half in the spirit so we stick cold eyes the news in the scripture at the top of the newsletter not everyone marries because they're passionately in love not everyone marries because oh you know uh, we've been courting for 29 years and we've known each other since prep school <laughs> well, I remember when we used to do head, shoulders, knees and toes together head, shoulders, knees and toes knees and toes head, shoulders, knees and toes knees and toes and I remember when we used to watch Dorothy the Dinosaur together well I still watch Dorothy the Dinosaur with my wife but I never married my wife 
because I was madly in love with her and I can guarantee you the feeling's mutual. <laughs> you know, she didn't marry me because she was madly in love with me. But God has a strange, I wouldn't say strange to me anymore, but strange is something that you call something strange, you just don't have any knowledge on. And most people don't have any knowledge on the true God, Jesus, the Christ. But we came together by uh, the hand of the Lord and I made it clear that I was looking for and needing a help meet. I didn't, I wasn't looking for a boss and I wasn't looking for a cook and I wasn't looking for a servant. I wasn't looking for uh, a meal ticket or whatever. I was looking for a help meet and the Lord who sees all things and sees me he knew I was a man that could not contain my body and he thought well I'll be using this man in the future I think it's best that he has himself a help me just to keep things nice and tidy and at bay someone who will cooperate with him and not go against him but go with him. So in the newsletter I haven't written this down but my wife is my rose. If you know anything about roses they're lovely to look at aren't they? And they smell very nice and they're they're very lovely presenters aren't they? But roses have thorns unless they're synthetic. (laughs) <laughs> and I can guarantee you my wife is not plastic no she's the real McCoy and she does have fun <laughs> but there is the rose of Sharon who's the rose above every rose isn't he and my wife is definitely no yellow rose of Texas but she is my rose and the thorns come with that because she's real and so yes and the same with Jesus ministry there's thorns come with it because he's the rose of Sharon he may be even the thorniest of all but if we want synthetic and plastic you know roses you won't have any thorns you won't have any thorns they just sit there and gather the dust you know what I mean yes so uh you won't have any any victories either because there'll be no balance. <laughs> so the newsletter today, it, isn't, it, isn't it a well of knowledge to know the living one? Isn't it a well? Isn't it wonderful that, that you know, and I have in the newsletter that so many young people out there think that, oh, I can't get married because I have no money. Oh, I can't get married because... Um, I, you know, I don't have a job. I can't get married because, um, you know, Reverend Dr. This of the Thou There said we're not madly in love. What a load of rubbish. We've got Jesus saying through an apostolic man here, there's, there's a requirement here that if you burn with passion, you best to go and get married. Hello? And that's not just for the men. Women burn with passions of the flesh too. Can someone say amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Unless, of course, they're just totally vegetated. (laughs) You know what I mean? But this is a, this is a thing that God has, God has installed in, in the, in the hard drive of, of the men and women to be attracted to one another in a physical way. And so we take this in our stride and we go along in, in the light, of course. And we, but we don't get bogged down in this marriage bit. And, and most churches are all about marriage. You know, it's family fun. And Jesus gets a bit of a, you know, a, a backdrop now and then. He gets a mention. Well, he always gets a mention. You know, like the old rover. Here, boy. Come on, come on, boy. Over here. That's what the way they treat Jesus these days. It's always family first. And you know, most of these families where it's family first, they're just psychologically battling every day. The children are, 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 you know, 
walking the walls <laughs> and the husband's just about ready, you know, to um, give the Valium a miss and go on to something stronger. And there's a dissatisfaction everywhere because we haven't done what the living one has said. The omni-knowledgeable one who knows all things. You know, I believe that my marriage with my dear wife is working and works because we don't try and make it work. Yeah, didn't get that one. We're not trying to make it work. Our emphasis is not our marriage. Our emphasis is not our children. Our emphasis is Jesus. He's the preeminent one. And we don't have these battles, marriage battles. And, you know, and I don't have to get my wife up on the platform and tell the world how great she is. They can see how great she is. And, and she don't have to tell the world how great I am because everyone runs in and say, oh, isn't he a wonderful man? <laughs> you know? And they say, oh, you know, isn't he handsome? <laughs> Your husband's so guapo. <laughs> and I say, really? Is that right? <laughs> I can feel a, a midlife crisis coming on. No. She might wake up in the morning and I'm clad in, in leather riding a, a Harley Davidson out the front. They might think there's a change of life happening in no, I don't think you'd have to worry about that. So, with the, with the authentic roses comes the thorns. <laughs> and it's all part of the program, isn't it, of being married. And, and, you know, it's a challenge. These thorns are a challenge, I tell you. <laughs> and it makes a better man out of you at the end, doesn't it? <laughs> you know. When you're persecuted, <laughs> especially for righteousness. So, I remember, you know, that you hear these churches and religious organisations and radio, Christian radio, it always reminds me of the old Smith chips, you know. Always reminds me of Christian radio. It's always the family and the children. And look, it just seems to me, I mean, it seems to be apparent means of reality, but still, it seems like every time I turn on these Christian radio stations, the problems are just never ending, you know. <laughs> it just goes on, and I think, I don't know, I just don't know anything about it, that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I recommend that young men don't get married, especially in the 21st century. But that's only my recommendation and that was only Paul the Apostle's recommendation and I reckon he got it from Jesus. <laughs> but if you're going to get married, you've got to make sure uh, that you're marrying uh, with Jesus as preeminent. If the woman doesn't have Jesus as preeminent and has some religion or something, it's not going to work. And if the man doesn't have Jesus as preeminent, it's just not, there's going to be caustic situations, you know. <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to happen. So, the newsletter today, the well of the living one who sees me and sees you, those who are viewing by DVD, listening by CD, World Wide Web, we are a, a paraclete regimen here, and we go as far as the leaves, don't we? Yes. And uh, up to the light we have, led by the Spirit all the way. And then we know that our hands are washed and clean, fathers are washed and, and clean. There's no blood on uh, Jesus' hands, and the Holy Ghost has been given the rightful opportunity to move in our lives. You know what I mean? So, marriage. Um, love and marriage go together like a horse and carriage, don't they? That's the local gentry. That's how it's elementary, but it's not today, is it? No. Um, 